So throughout history, we have relied on technology to tackle humanity's biggest challenges. Today, I'm really excited to be here in front of you to talk about the biggest technological solution that has transformed how we live and work. And that is the electricity grid. In fact, the electricity grid has worked so well that in the last several decades, we haven't seen the need to make any significant changes to it. Instead, we have been busy reaping its rewards. We have created some wonderful things like the semiconductor chip, which has allowed us to build powerful computers, which when connected to the internet, allow us to carry the entire world's information in our hands. This has led to an unbelievable increase in productivity and efficiency, not to mention human lifespan and personal well-being. <coughs> However, these gains have come with an inconvenient cost. My own story intersects with the grid after watching An Inconvenient Truth with my five-year-old son and having a conversation. As I was driving him to school the next morning, he started crying and asked me, if he would have any oxygen left to breathe by the time he grew up. At that time, my team had just finished creating the software that was used to build the chips that went into the first iPhone. Inspired by his innocent question, I started thinking what I could do to help mitigate this massive challenge in front of us. And that's when it occurred to me that this computer chip actually works in fundamentally the same way as the electricity grid. You see, even though the chip is tiny, the electrons have to run so fast on this that the small wet metal wires start behaving as transmission lines. And this was exciting because I knew that we have perfected the algorithms and technology that was needed to optimize these really complex systems that have millions of transmission lines. And fortunately for us, because the laws of physics don't usually change, we could use the same math to make the grid run more efficiently. However, there was one more problem. The behavior of this grid depends on the behavior of humans who derive electricity from this grid, and that is variable. One day, you might burn a lot of electricity because you're thinking about a talk you have to give in the shower, and the next day, you might be out skiing with your friends and may not consume as much electricity. And the grid has to deal with this variability. Fortunately for us, we have encountered a problem like this before and that is in the context of the internet, where we have built very powerful machine learning and big data algorithms that allow us to not only understand the human behavior, but actually influence it by giving personalized recommendations and targeted purchasing suggestions. So now everything fell in place. We could use the same technologies that the grid help us invent, namely connected computers, powerful optimization, machine learning, and big data technologies back onto the grid and make it a smart grid, where data becomes a new source of power. What this means is that we can do some really powerful things. Skeptics argue that adding solar or wind to the grid can be very expensive because it requires costly fossil fuel burning backup generators. However, by using the data from the grid, we can eliminate the need of a lot of backup generators by simply optimally directing the flow of electrons from wherever they are available to exactly where they are needed, precisely when they are needed. In effect, the grid becomes its own backup. We know this all works. Thousands of utilities have implemented programs where they give incentives to customers and have avoided tens of thousands of megawatts of fossil fuel burning power plants. In fact, the simple idea of software influencing consumption can be more powerful and can save more power than all the solar and the wind and the hydro of the world combined. The smart grid fundamentally changes our very notion of a power plant from a centralized, discrete, fossil fuel burning entity to something which is massively distributed, self-healing, software defined power system where demand and supply are automatically balanced at all nodes and at all times. However, as with any other transformation, the status quo must change as well. Utilities have to evolve from treating their users as ratepayers and start serving them as customers. And the vendors who want to earn the right to serve these utilities of the future have to evolve from selling transformers to transforming data into new sources of revenue. I, for one, am very excited because I can tell my son that we will have the oxygen to breathe when he grows up. <laughs> Bravo. 
<laughs> for too long, we have equated energy with the consumption of natural resources. And for the first time, software has given us the ability to treat data as a new source of energy. <laughs> Apart from being cheap and clean, data is different in one other key way. It is the only resource which is growing. So my question for all of you is, what new business models can we invent by adding data, using data, and adding intelligence to our infrastructure and transform this trillion dollar supply chain uh, that carries electrons from generation all the way to consumption? Thank you.